Hello everybody, it's me, Mario, and I'm a Luigi. And um, I apologize for my bad intro right there, but if I said my intro quickly as usual, then okay. But if I didn't, then please let me know. But anyways, we're here with the fourth and final part to the Top 40 Amazing Weather Phenomenon. Yep, and me and Mario are excited to get th to show this video to you guys. Because after that, there's our second awesome video coming up called the Top 40 Amazing Natural Phenomena. And boy, are me and Mario hyped for that one. Yeah, but anyways, let's get into this one. And we're only going from 9 to 1, so this should be fun. Here we go, number 9. Alrighty. Wow! Luigi, watch. Ha. Okay. Okay. It originates from a mass of storm clouds at a height of more than five kilometers and occurs during 140 to 160 nights a year, 10 hours per day, yeah. and up to 280 times per hour. Oh. But not only that, a nearby marsh is a messy gas, improving the electrical conductivity of the clouds, which helps cause these extended lightning strikes. Man, this is some interesting stuff, bro. Not nah, joke, Mario. This is really cool stuff. Number eight. Fire rainbows. Ow! This list is over <gasps> some pretty cool stuff. It's a cool. This is one of my favorites. Mine too. A fire rainbow, rainbow cloud, or circumhorizontal arc is an extremely rare phenomenon that occurs only when the sun is high, allowing its light to pass through high altitude cirrus clouds that have a high content of ice crystals. Okay. Fire rainbows, unlike what their name implies, yeah. are neither fire nor rainbows, oh. but are called this because of their brilliant and beautiful pastel colors and flame-like appearance. That's a cool! Brightly colored circumhorizontal arcs occur mostly during the summer and between particular latitudes. That's cool! When the sun is very high in the sky, sunlight entering flat, hexagon-shaped ice crystals gets split into individual colors like a prism. The conditions required to form a fire rainbow are very precise. All right. The sun has to be at an elevation of 58 degrees or greater. Cool. There must be high altitude cirrus clouds with plate shaped ice crystals. Nice. And sunlight has to enter these set ice crystals at a very specific angle. All right. This is why these are such a rare sight. Yeah. The rarity in the arc depends on where you are. Okay. At medium latitudes, like much of the U.S., it's not rare. It isn't? It can be seen several times each summer, if you're lucky, of course. Nice! In contrast, further north, in much of Europe, the circumhorizon arc is a rarity, and impossible to see north of Copenhagen. Alright. Fire rainbows are not to be confused with iridescent clouds, which can produce a similar effect. Gotcha! While circumhorizontal arcs occur only in cirrus clouds, iridescence often occurs in alto cumulus, cirro cumulus, and lenticular clouds. Oh! And it's very, very rare to see them in cirrus clouds. Right. But how would they be seen in lenticular clouds? Because those were rumored to be UFO clouds to begin with. So wait. You think maybe the fire rainbows are responsible for the glow inside the lenticular clouds? Red rain. I don't know. Red rain is caused by dust or sand that has blown into the atmosphere and is carried by the wind to great distances, oh. eventually mixed with rain clouds and gives color to the rain itself. Okay. A number of theories spread about the cause of the colored rain, including its relation to aliens. Okay. Before a official report concluded that the colors were caused by the algae spores sucked into the atmosphere by a water spout. Oh. There are a number of algae species in the region. Okay. Which could explain why the stories were so constant for the last hundred years. Hmm. Red rain in Europe, and especially England, is usually colored by the dust that is carried across the continent, coming from Saharan sandstorms. So that thing goes to multiple places in that one spot. Yeah, Europe and red red rain in Europe and a lot of other places. Oh, number the six. We're getting there, Mario. Two suns. 
Two suns? The sun is really close to the horizon, and there are serious clouds in the sky. Sometimes another sun or light source can appear, oh. thus giving the impression of another sun appearing together in the sky. Okay. Two suns are actually the color of bright points of light created by the sun that was deflected by the crystals in high clouds. Nice. Two suns have been reported in many different parts of the world, sometimes being close together and other times far apart. Oh. As of today, scientists are still puzzled with the phenomenon, and it's still not completely clear how it's formed. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it is, bro. It's a very cool thing to see. Number five. We're getting that Mario. I know. I'm very excited, Luigi. Fire world. Oh. A fire world, also known as a fire tornado or fire Luigi. Is a rare phenomenon in which fire forms a tornado-like vortex of flames. Fire worlds can be spawned by other natural events. Such as earthquakes and thunderstorms, and can be incredibly dangerous. Oh no! In some cases, spinning well out of the zone of the fire itself. Oh! Fire worlds are more closely related to dust devils, and are distinct from the larger, more powerful tornadoes that develop from supercell thunderstorms. Oh! Fire worlds have been known to be nearly a mile high. Whoa! And have wind speeds of over 100 miles per hour. It will last for 20 or more minutes. Mm. Now, though it's rare, this type of weather is extremely dangerous. Guys, even though I look away from the camera sometimes, I can still hear what's going on, so I can't completely not see what's going on. Number four. Red sprites and blue jets. Oh! We've talked about some pretty weird and beautiful things thus far. Yeah. But this is where things start to take a turn for the bizarre. Nice. Red sprites and blue jets all refer to phenomena that occur in the upper atmosphere in the regions around thunderstorms. All right. They appear as cones, glows, and discharges. They were only discovered in the last century because of their placement and extremely brief lifespan. Cool. Red sprites are massive Woo. but weak luminous flashes that appear directly above an active thunderstorm oh, system okay. and are coincident with cloud to ground or intra cloud lightning strokes. Nice! They're normally colored reddish orange with hanging tendrils below and arcing branches above. They can also be preceded by a reddish halo. Alright! Sprites rarely appear singly, usually occurring in clusters of two, three, or more. Whoa! Blue jets are a second high altitude optical phenomenon. Distinct from sprites, Observed above oh. thunderstorms using low light television systems. Okay. As their name implies, blue jets are optical ejections from the top of the electrically active core regions of thunderstorms. From what we know, red sprites and blue jets are an integral feature of every thunderstorm system of moderate size or larger in the terrestrial system and may be an essential element of the Earth's electrical circuit. Furthermore, it seems likely that they have been a part of thunderstorms dating back millions of years. It also seems possible that red sprites and blue jets occur with the lightning on other planets, such as Jupiter and Venus. So other planets will have this effect along with lightning? Well, what do you know? You learn something new every day. I guess, Mario. Number three. Earthquake lights. Ah! Earthquake lights are unusual luminous atmospheric phenomenon. They are usually reportedly in areas of high seismic activity or volcanic eruptions. Okay. They were believed to be myths until they were photographed in 1965 wow. during an earthquake in Japan. Since then, many mysterious lights have been witnessed and filmed before seismic occurrences. It was then that seismologists worldwide accepted their existence as earthquake lights. All right. Over the past few years, various theories have been proposed for how earthquake lights form, including the disruption of the Earth's magnetic fields by tectonic stress, All right. in which quartz-bearing rocks produce voltages when compressed in a certain way. Earthquake lights seem to be most common in Italy, Greece, France, Germany, in parts of South America. All right. Though they have been observed in Japan, North America, Darn. and elsewhere. They're here. The lights can occur weeks before major earthquakes. Weeks before. Or during 
the actual shaking. Or oh, during? They have been recorded at distances of up to 100 miles from the epicenter. So either weeks before the earthquake or during the actual shaking is when you can see them earthquake lights? That's scary, Mario. I know, right? Oh, lightning. Oh. This is a very rare phenomenon that involves ball-shaped lightning that moves mm. much slower than normal lightning. It has been reported to be as large as 8 feet in diameter and can cause great damage. Uh, oh, there man. Are reports of ball lightning destroying whole buildings. I can throw ball lightning. There currently is no fully satisfactory or generally accepted scientific theory for ball lightning. No, you can't, Luigi. Mainly because it is so rare. And when it does occur, it doesn't stay around long enough to be studied. It doesn't? It generally has a lifetime of less than five seconds. At one time, ball lightning was thought to be extremely rare. But this is because most eyewitnesses feared ridicule and wouldn't come forward. Wow, okay. In reality, 5% of the population has seen ball lightning. Today, most researchers agree that it is real. Yet its nature is still highly controversial. Alright. No sensible theories yet exist to explain it. Alright then. Ball lightning has been reported as glowing orbs in the sky. Cool. Which is sometimes mistaken as UFOs. Alright guys, if you guys heard some background noises, I apologize for that. And Luigi, you can throw lightning attacks but not lightning balls. Yeah, you're right, Mario. What's number one? Aurora Borealis. Oh, look at it. The Aurora Borealis oh. are a fascinating phenomenon caused by collisions oh. between the sun's electrically charged particles and the molecules of atoms in the Earth's atmosphere. Oh. The spectacular light show takes place in the upper atmosphere at a height of approximately 100 kilometers and can best be compared to candles flickering in the wind or fluttering curtains in shades of green and yellow. Yeah. They are more typically seen closer to the poles and during the equinoxes of the year. I know. The phenomenon is often seen around midnight and is experienced on a dark, clear night in the period from September to the beginning of April. That's awesome. Most famous of these are the northern lights. Cool. Look at that big field with the lights. Yeah. I like that. I I want to I'd want to be there and see that. I know. That's the best thing in the universe, man. Yeah, Luigi, that was the best video I've watched in my whole entire life. Yeah, you said it, bro. I'm not gonna lie. That video was kind of cool. Alright, guys. Now, let's tell you guys about what happened. Basically, we just got surprised by something cool. The Northern Lights at number one, a.k.a. the Aurora Borealis. Now, guys... You guys are probably wondering why, you know, some of the people who worked on this thing helped make this video. You're probably wondering why it's not outlined with a little color bar or anything. Well, you see, unlike, you know, the other plushies did, we turned off the um annotations for some reason. Because, you know, we thought the annotations were going to make advertisements appear in the middle of our video. Because that's what happened to Silver whenever he left um the annotations on. But I think they fixed that now, so that won't happen. But anyways, if you guys did enjoy this video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, as we always say. And we'll see you on our second awesome video, the top 40 amazing natural phenomena. So yeah, see you later, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. Wahoo!